Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth Goswami and today I am going to teach you a very important topic from general pathology or from the inflammation chapter that is a chronic inflammation. Most important short note, many MCQs can be asked from this particular topic. So chronic inflammation could be of two variety. It could be non-specific or granulomatous inflammation. In the granulomatous inflammation, there will be granuloma formation. This is the granuloma, which is a type 4 hypersensitivity, right? We will discuss it in a detail in our subsequent slide. So this particular chronic inflammation topic comes under competency number PA 4.3 as per the Indian curriculum. It means students need to understand the define and describe the chronic inflammation, including its causes, type, non-specific granulomatous inflammation with example. So we will see each of these subcategory, each of these learning objective one by one. So first of all, learning objective, a student need to understand the definition of chronic inflammation, then etiology of chronic inflammation, morphology, cells involved in chronic inflammation, granulomatous inflammation and the examples or the type of various granuloma formation. So these are the our learning objective. So first we will begin with first learning objective that is definition of chronic inflammation. What is the meaning of chronic inflammation? So in our acute inflammation discussion, we have seen that acute inflammation is of short duration while the chronic inflammation is of prolonged duration, right? So it's a response of prolonged duration means the response could be for the duration of weeks or month in which the inflammation tissue injury and the attempts of repair coexist in a varying combination, right? In the chronic inflammation, there is a presence of mononuclear inflammatory cell inflammation, there is a presence of tissue injury and body will try to repair that tissue injury as well. So this is the chronic inflammation, right? All right, and it's of prolonged duration. The characteristic feature is that tissue injury is very severe and progressive. It's not mild. In acute, it is a mild, but here it is somewhat severe and progressive one. Which are the causes or the etiology of chronic inflammation, our second objective. So, etiology, main etiology is persistent of infection. For example, tubercle bacilli, certain virus, certain fungus, parasite, you know, they will persist in the body. So that will lead to chronic inflammation, which is difficult to eradicate, right? Erad eradication is very difficult. Body immunity cannot remove it. That's why they will persist in the body and they will lead to chronic inflammation. Hypersensitivity reaction, an example of chronic inflammation. Third etiology is autoimmune disease, particularly in the form of rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, you know, all that hyper, all that autoimmune disease. And that's the reason, you know, in the SLE, if you take a biopsy in the autoimmune disease, if biopsy is taken and histopathological examination done, then they will show the inflammation by chronic inflammatory cell like that of lymphocyte and macrophage, right? It's an example of chronic inflammation. Another example is exogenous chemical exposure like that of silica exposure, asbestos exposure, you know, silicosis. So occupational lung disease comes under category of chronic inflammation. And the endogenous toxic agent. Now, what do you mean by endogenous toxic agent? For example, if the patient is having hypertension, hyperhomocysteine, right? If the patient is having high lipid level. So all that can lead to damage of the endothelium within the blood vessel. And endothelial damage will initiate a response to injury hypothesis, which will ultimately lead to development of atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is also one of the example of chronic inflammation, right? All right. So this is the heart of our today's lecture, which are the morphological feature of chronic inflammation. In any chronic inflammation, there is a three main morphological features. One is mononuclear cell infiltration. Mononuclear cell means the cell having single nucleus, right? They have the single nucleus. The example is monocyte, macrophage, lymphocytes and the plasma cell. They are the mononuclear chronic inflammatory cell. Among that, most important one is macrophage and lymphocyte. Second one is tissue destruction is present in chronic inflammation, which is a hallmark of chronic inflammation. That will be tissue destruction for the short. And the third, third morphological feature is that because of tissue destruction, you know, body tries to repair it. So there will be attempts of healing, right? Wound healing. It is an example of chronic inflammation. Body tries to heal the 
destructed tissue and healing obviously occur by fibrosis you know along with fibrosis there will be angiogenesis as well so body attempt to heal by angiogenesis and fibrosis right fibrosis means filling the defect by collagenous tissue replacement right filling the defect by fibrous tissue all right so what what is the main which is the main cell in the chronic inflammation so the main cell in the chronic in see this all are the chronic inflammatory cell right but the main cell is macrophage which is the most important cell in chronic inflammation you know macrophage in the blood is known by the name monocyte in the blood it is known by the name monocyte which is having half life of one day and when they reach the extra vascular tissue they will transform into phagocytic cell and they are given the name macrophage so in the blood it is monocyte but in the tissue it is known by the name macrophage and you know in the tissue macrophage can survive for many month to many years right but the monocyte can survive only for one to two day all right now macrophage again is of two type see macrophage is a main cell and the macrophage again is of two type in chronic inflammation one macrophage that is you know activated macrophage and another one is a tissue macrophage right so first we will talk about the activated macrophage so activated macrophage again is of two type either they they can be classically activated macrophage or they could be alternatively activated macrophage can you able to understand what i am telling macrophage is of two type activated macrophage and tissue macrophage tissue macrophage reside in a tissue right an activated macrophage also can be divided in a two category that is classically activated and alternatively activated the stimulus for the classical activation of macrophage is microbial product like that of you know uh, tau like receptor ligands and interferon gamma this is interferon gamma secreted from the t helper one type of cell right so this interferon gamma can activate a macrophage classically and once the macrophage classically activated they can produce two type of substance one is reactive oxygen species nitric oxide lysosomal enzymes you know all these three will help in removal of the microbes they are having microbicidal action particularly this reactive oxygen species which is known by the name free radical will help in doing killing of the many bacteria and the fungus they they will help in killing the microbe right and you know the uh, it will also help in a phagocytosis so this is the main action of this particular substance now if classically activated macrophage secrete interleukin 1 12 and 13 or chemokines then they will do the neutrophil recruitment or monocyte recruitment they will help in il facilitating inflammation so they will have inflammatory effect now alternatively alternatively activated macrophage is activated by stimulus interleukin 4 and interleukin 13 they will do alternative activated macrophage and once the macrophage is activated alternative pathway you know they can secrete two substance one is growth factor and tumor one is growth factor and transforming growth factor beta obviously they are having role in tissue repair and the fibrosis right they will do the fibrosis transforming growth factor beta while if they secrete interleukin 10 and transforming growth factor beta then they can have anti inflammatory effect so classically activated macrophage having inflammatory effect while alternatively activated macrophage having anti inflammatory effect right so the action is opposite this image is from the robins book of pathology very well illustrated right all right now tissue macrophage that's all about activated macrophage now see let's see about the tissue macrophage so again this is a diagram from the robins book see uh, the tissue macrophage will get produced from the yolk sac or from the liver they will produce from the progenitor in the yolk sac or liver and once they reach the tissue you know they are known by the name tissue macrophage and according to the tissue they are given the different name right in the different tissue the nomenclature of macrophage is different for example if macrophage is present in liver then it is known by the name kuffer cell in the spleen macrophage known by the name littoral cell in the central nervous system it is known by the name microglia macrophage in the synovium known by the name type a lining synovial cell in the bone they are known by the name osteoclast in the lung alveolar macrophage or dust cell in the lymph node they are given the name sinus histiocyte and in the placenta tissue macrophage known by the name 
Bofbor cell, right? In the kidney, they are known by the name messenger cell. So these are the different, you know, name of macrophage according to the residency in the tissue, right? In the different tissue, they are known by the different names. All right. So remember this. It can be asked in MCQ, right? In our systemic pathology, I will teach you uh, each of the cell in the detail, right? In like uh, when I am teaching you the liver, I will talk about the Kuffer cell, right? So remember this nomenclature. All right. Now let's see the role of lymphocyte in the chronic inflammation. So you know the microbes and the various environmental antigen will activate the T and B lymphocyte. The main the main uh, you know lymphocytes involved in eliminating the microbial agent is T and B lymphocyte. You know they can amplify and they can propagate a chronic inflammation. You know the T lymphocyte will help in cell mediated immunity while the B lymphocyte can get converted into plasma cell they will produce the antibody and they will help in antibody mediated immunity. Both these immunity will help in eliminating the microbial agent. We will discuss it in a detail in our immunopathology system, right? I will discuss it in the detail where in the very well manner in that system, right? But just now understand that T lymphocyte mediate cell mediated immunity while the B lymphocyte mediate antibody mediated immunity. You know the CD4 T helper lymphocyte again divided into three variety TH1, 2 and 70. I will explain it in a detail in immunopathology chapter. As of now, we are skipping that description, right? I will very well explain the T lymphocyte in our immunopathology chapter. All right. So, chronic inflammation is of two type, right? As we have discussed in our first slide, chronic inflammation could be of two type. One is chronic non-specific inflammation, and the second one is granulomatous inflammation. Understand? It could be non-specific or it could be specialized form of chronic inflammation that is known by the name granulomatous inflammation all right all right so first of all let's talk about the granulomatous inflammation uh, you know we have already discussed about the chronic non-specific inflammation right in which there is an infiltration by the lymphocyte macrophage you know like that of fibrosis is present that is non-specific inflammation but you know granulomatous inflammation is a specialized variety of chronic inflammation now what happened in granulomatous inflammation let me explain it in a detail i will discuss it in a detail in a type 4 hypersensitivity as well but as as of now in the immunology we will discuss but as of now let me give you an overview of granulomatous inflammation this is a very beautiful diagram from the robbins book of pathology see whenever this antigen this is the antigen right orange color so whenever the antigen enter into our body antigen presenting cell will present this antigen to the CD4 T helper lymphocyte. They will present the antigen to the T helper lymphocyte, particularly TH1 cell. And you know, over the antigen presenting cell, there is one molecule known by the name MHC class 2. This blue color is MHC class 2. So this MHC class 2 will help in presenting the antigen to the CD4 T helper cell. And once this TH1 helper cell recognize the antigen, you know, they will secrete a cytokines like that of tumor necrosis factor, chemokines, and you know, all that will help in leukocyte and monocyte recruitment to the site of inflammation. Additionally, TH1 secrete most important substance known by the name interferon gamma. This interferon gamma will activate the monocyte and you know, they will activate that macrophage. You know, they will do the function of activation of macrophage. And once the macrophage is activated, you know they will change their shape see this is the round cell right but once they are activated by interferon gamma which is secreted from th1 t helper cell you know the activated macrophage will change their shape see here the shape is elongated this is a boot shape you can see a central indentation it's a boot shape right so and there is a lots of abundant cytoplasm right eosinophilic cytoplasm so so you know it looks like an epithelium they changing the shape and it looks like a boot shape and they are you know look like an epithelium that's why they given the name epithelioid cell and once this epithelioid cell you know there are lots of epithelioid cell they will fuse together this this is a fusion right they will fuse together the nucleus fuse together and they will form a multinucleated giant cell right when the epithelioid cell fuse together they will form giant cell 
right multi nucleated giant cell so it is a fusion of epithelioid cell all right this is the chronic inflammation so obviously there would be lymphocytes so these are the lymphocytes right lymphocytes are present and peripherally there is a ream of fibrosis see these are the fibroblast so there will be proliferation of fibroblast there will be fibrosis right all right so you know in this particular condition granulomatous inflammation there will be activated macrophage which is known by the name epithelioid cell they will fuse together they will form giant cell because of chronic inflammation there will be presence of lymphocytes some macrophage and you know peripheral rim is of fibrosis fibroblast proliferation so all these five structure together is known by the name granuloma right it is known by the name granuloma right all right and you know this activated macrophage can secrete interleukin 12 which can further activate th1 cell for the more and more production of interferon gamma so you know that was all about the granulomatous inflammation morphology right this is the morphology of granulomatous inflammation right so chronic granulomatous inflammation consists of lymphocyte macrophage you know lymphocyte fibrosis and giant cell you know and sometime in the center caseous necrosis also can be seen in most of the case caseous necrosis is present so which is also the component of granuloma right centrally caseous necrosis is present all right and all right so we have discussed the what we have discussed the morphology of epithelioid cell as well you know which is having abundant cytoplasm boot shape and it resembles like that of epithelium and when they fuse together they will form giant cell right now granuloma is of different types these are the different type of granuloma foreign body granuloma immune granuloma naked granuloma palisaded granuloma stellate granuloma fibrin ring and dark granuloma first foreign body granuloma granuloma means uh, you know we have mentioned the granuloma structure so it is seen in only chronic granulomatous inflammation so all these are example of chronic granulomatous inflammation right now foreign body granuloma is because of foreign particle like that of tuck suture material silicon implant silica particles like that of foreign material you know all that will initiate a granuloma formation because they will not readily remove by the body right and you know here uh, there will be absence of T cell mediated response. T cell mediated response is not present. There will be no immune or inflammatory response, right? And if you do the polarized light microscopy, then foreign body will be refractile. All right. Now, immune granuloma. So, obviously, immune granuloma is seen in tuberculosis like that of condition, right? It is caused by causative agents or the microbe, right? That that are, that are capable of inducing persistent T cell mediated response, right? They will not easily remove from the body. They will live inside the cell and, you know, they will activate the T lymphocyte for constant immune response, right? They will not remove, they will not easily remove and that's why they initiate a granulomatous inflammation. Particularly, example is activated T helper 1 cell which will secrete interferon gamma they will activate the macrophage so it convert into epithelioid cell and there will be granuloma formation right all right immune granuloma is of two type immune means it is mediated by immunity it is mediated by T helper lymphocyte by interferon gamma production right this is this one is immune granuloma right all right so it's of two type infective or non-infective Example of infective granuloma is tuberculosis, syphilis, cat scratch disease, lymphogranuloma inguinale, brucellosis, and leprosy. Non-infective granuloma examples are sarcoidosis, inflammatory bowel disease, vaginal granulomatosis, humid arthritis, berylliosis, and the Hodgkin's lymphoma. These are the non-infective condition, right? All right. Third category is naked granuloma. Naked granuloma means they doesn't have lymphocytes. Peripheral ream of lymphocyte is absent, right? It's classically seen in sarcoidosis. It's a known caseating granuloma as well. Here there will be no necrosis, right? Caseating necrosis is not present. Remember, dear students, in any granulomatous inflammation, caseous necrosis is always present. But in sarcoidosis like that of condition, there will be absence of necrosis. 
Sometime in the tuberculosis, also 2 to 5 percent case necrosis, caseous necrosis is not present. So, it is not the rule. Usually, it is present, but it is not the rule, right? That caseous necrosis should always present 100 percent, right? It is not the rule. All right. Fourth category is palisaded granuloma. So, palisaded granuloma means there will be palisading appearance of epithelioid cell, right? They will be arranged in a palisaded pattern. It is seen in humidoid arthritis and vaginal granulomatosis. Stellate granuloma. This particular granuloma seen in cat scratch disease. You know, we, causative agent for it is Bartonella hensley. In children, it is very common and it will affect the lymph nodes. So, see, in this diagram, you can see that there will be follicular hyperplasia, right? With a central stellate necrosis. See, this is the necrosis. Central stellate star shaped necrosis, right? With a lots of neutrophil within it. And, you know, it is surrounded by palisaded histiocyte. You know, it is surrounded by palisaded histiocytes. So, that is the stellate granuloma. Most important MCQ. All right. Fibrin ring or donut granuloma. It is seen in Q fever. You know, here there will be ring-like granuloma. There will be fibrin ring. It's a non-necrotizing granuloma. Caseating necrosis is not present. In the sarcoidosis also, caseating ne necrosis is not seen. Here also it is absent. It's seen in liver and bone marrow. All right. Now, malaria granuloma. That is known by the name Dirk's granuloma, which is seen in the brain. It is seen in case of a cerebral malaria, right? Cerebral involvement by malaria. Classically, Plasbodium falciparum species can lead to development of dark granuloma in the brain. You know, in the brain, you can see a reactive astrocytes admiss with microglial cell, right? In the brain, macrophage is known by the name microglial cell, right? It will proliferate. There will be lymphocytes and, you know, surrounding, they will surround the focus of ischemic necrosis or hemorrhage. All right. So that was all about the chronic inflammation. Hope you have enjoyed this uh, video on chronic inflammation, right? And you know, uh, you can attempt the quiz or the MCQ exam, you know, in the quiz section, right? In the store section, in my course, you can see a taste on the chronic inflammation, taste on the inflammation as well, right? So, so here with, I am not discussing the MCQ, you can check that section. So that's all about the chronic inflammation. I will be right back with a new video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. Thank you very much.